Welcome to another episode of Mike's Money Picks. Today on the podcast, we're continuing our all 32 NFL team previews for the upcoming 2023 fantasy football season. And today we're discussing the third place team in the NFC North, the Green Bay Packers. Now this offense is undergoing a major transition with switching from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love, the quarterback. So just how is that going to impact them from a fantasy standpoint? Well, let's find out. Now, before we get started, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified when all of our season-long fantasy football content drops, including this episode and our position-by-position previews, as well as our weekly golf and college football content. If you're listening to the podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever else, please rate and review. It really helps me out a lot. I really do appreciate it. Now, we're going to talk about best ball drafts here on this episode. If you want to try out best ball and you're a first-time user, I recommend trying Underdog. You can use my promo code mconley 88 to get your first deposit matched up to $100. And if you want to see my full rank and draft guide for the entire NFL, go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Mike's Money Picks. All right, that does it for your introduction. Let's go ahead and talk about the Green Bay Packers. All right, so in 2022, the Green Bay Packers offense ranked 17th in the league in yards per game and 14th in the league in points per game. In terms of play calling, they were right around the league average. They ranked 15th in rush rate, which means that you can inverse that, meaning that they ranked 17th or 18th, excuse me, in pass rate. And so you're just looking at a team that their play calling was kind of right along league average. 2023 is going to be an interesting year for Green Bay because it will be their first season without Aaron Rodgers as the week one starter since 2008. And honestly, I think at this point, it's kind of a welcome change. Um, you know, Rodgers was outstanding in Green Bay. Won him a Super Bowl, got him to the playoffs numerous years, you know, won multiple MVPs. Great player, but the 21, 2021 season just did not go as planned. I think everybody in Green Bay is kind of ready for a new start with Jordan Love. You know, they drafted him in the first round three years ago, and they're kind of ready to see how this is going to turn out. Matt LaFleur is still the head coach. They still have pretty much their full complement of offensive linemen and weapons, and, and we're going to see how this year goes for Green Bay. Now, at the quarterback position specifically, let's talk about how Aaron Rodgers did last season. So Aaron Rodgers finished 2022 as quarterback 21 in fantasy points per game. He only had one weekly finish inside the top 10 quarterbacks. So just not a great year for Aaron Rodgers, was not very productive. You know, only one week in the top 10, pretty much if you played him in DraftKings, he pretty much never really came through for you. If you started him in season long, he came through for you one week. Like he, he just really didn't have a good season. Now, Jordan Love has one NFL start to his name to this point in his career. He had 12.9 fantasy points against the Kansas City Chiefs back in 2021. That was the infamous Aaron Rodgers not vaccinated COVID game. Um, and, you know, 12.9 fantasy points, it's not great, but it's not really what you want, you know, on a week to week basis for a starting quarterback. However, that was his first NFL start and he was not the full time starter in an offense that was not built around his strengths. So the bottom line for the quarterback position for the Packers is that Jordan Love is in a situation where it's hard to imagine him being significantly more productive in 2023 than Aaron Rodgers was last season in 2022. And Aaron Rodgers was quarterback 21 last season because I'll be honest, if Love was a lot better than Rodgers, he would have started. He would have been the guy that was playing in those games. And so it's hard for me to project him to be any better than that quarterback 21 ranking. So for that reason, Jordan Love is my quarterback 23 for the 2023 season. All right, that does it for the quarterback position. Let's go ahead and talk about some running backs. So Green Bay does have two running backs that are worth talking about. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. In fact, in 2022, both Jones and Dillon finished in the top 30 running backs in fantasy. Now, these two running backs combined for seven weekly top 10 finishes, four of which were by Aaron Jones, three of which were by A.J. Dillon. But that's pretty good, right? If you're getting a running back in the top 10, seven out of 17 weeks, that's not bad at all. Now, there were two weeks where both Green Bay running backs were in the weekly top 15 and seven weeks where both were in the weekly top 30. Translation. This offense can support two fantasy relevant running backs as it is currently constructed. These running backs got used quite a bit in the pass game and they got used quite a bit in the red zone. And those are really the two cheat codes, if you will, to have running back success in fantasy football. So it does not shock me that both of them finished in the top 30. It was one of my bold predictions last season before the season started that Green Bay would finish with two top 20 running backs. And I wasn't that far off with Bo Jones and Dylan coming in the top 30. Now, let's talk about Aaron Jones specifically. So Aaron Jones finished 2022 as running back 9 overall and running back 11 in fantasy points per game. Aaron Jones has not finished below running back 11 in fantasy points per game since 2018. He's been a very consistent, solid option in fantasy each of the last four seasons, and he should continue to do so this year. Last year, Jones had a 57.5% snap share 
and a 54% opportunity share in the Green Bay backfield. However, he was the primary running back used in the passing game. He ranked eighth among all running backs with 72 targets, which means that if you added up all of his weighted opportunities, which weighs a target slightly more than a carry because those lead to more fantasy points, Jones finished 12th among all running backs in weighted opportunities in 2022. Now, the usage of Jones in the passing game, I think you can attribute that a little bit to the lack of productivity from the Green Bay receivers and tight ends, which could be a problem that persists into this year. So I definitely think that that passing game work is going to continue for Aaron Jones. A.J. Dillon last year finished his running back 26 overall and running back 33 in fantasy points per game. He was running back 29 back in 2021 in fantasy points per game, so he saw a slight dip from his 2021 totals to 2022. And I think you can contribute that a little bit to the Packers offense just not being as generally successful, so there was not as many red zone and goal line opportunities for A.J. Dillon as there were in 2021. Jones, or I'm sorry, Dillon ended 2022 with a 49% snap share and a 43.5% opportunity share. He finished 24th in the league in weighted opportunities. Dylan still saw a little bit of use in the past game as well, but not as much as Aaron Jones. Like I said, he was primarily the red zone end zone guy, which this offense didn't have a whole lot of chances at as compared to previous years. So the bottom line for the running back position is that both Packers running backs, Jones and Dylan, do have value in offenses that utilizes them fairly heavily, like this offense is going to revolve around these two running backs. They're still the best playmakers in this offense. Aaron Jones is one of the more consistent year-in, year-out options at the running back position. We've seen years where Aaron Jones got all the way up around the top five where he where he had ceiling seasons, in my opinion, in terms of the touchdowns scored and the use in the passing game. And I think that just his overall usage, he has a very high floor as well. I, I just think he's a really solid option that you can get to be your running back two possibly, or, or maybe even you're running back one. I think he's a lot better option than a lot of other guys he's being drafted around. I have A.J. Dillon, or I have Aaron Jones, excuse me, golly, those two names are confusing. I have Aaron Jones slightly ahead of consensus. Aaron Jones is my running back 12 for 2023. A.J. Dillon is my running back 35 for 2023. Now, in terms of best ball, I think both of these guys are playable and, and stackable in best ball. You know, they've shown the ability to both have success in the same week. They both kind of provide different um, components to this Packers offense. So I do think that if you're playing best ball and you stack both of them together, I actually think that's a totally viable strategy. And I don't think that about all running back combinations. All right, that does it for the running back position. Let's go ahead and talk about some wide receivers. So last season, Alan Lazard was Green Bay's highest scoring wide receiver. He finished his wide receiver 35 overall and wide receiver 34 in fantasy points per game. Over the course of the season, he had a 21.1% target share, but he also got a disproportionate amount of red zone and end zone targets. For whatever reason, when Green Bay got close to scoring, Lazard was Aaron Rodgers' guy, and that was the guy he looked for pretty much every time when they were in the red zone or you know near the goal line. Now, I think that kind of led to a lot of his production. I think that he, he kind of had a season that was defined by that. If he didn't have all those red zone and end zone looks, it would not have been a good season for Alan Lazard. Um, so I do think that that's worth noting because Alan Lazard is no longer a Green Bay Packer. He went with Aaron Rodgers to the New York Jets. So you've got a lot of red zone and end zone targets. They're going to be up for grabs among the rest of the Packers receiving core. The Packers receiving core that includes rookie from last year, Romeo Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs finished his wide receiver 71 overall last year, and he had a 15% target share. Now, Dobbs did give you a few ceiling weeks, though. He had three performances in the weekly top 25. Dobbs is still going to be around. I think Dobbs is definitely a candidate to see a little bit of increased work with Alan Lazard no longer being a Green Bay Packer. But the Packers receiver that I want to target this year is Christian Watson. Christian Watson finished last season as wide receiver 41 overall and wide receiver 34 in fantasy points per game, which doesn't sound that impressive. On the season, he had a 15.2% target share. Again, not impressive. However, you got to remember that Christian Watson was not a full-time starter in this Green Bay offense until week 10. In week 10, Watson became a full-time starter and he never saw under an 80% snap share from week 10 on. From weeks 10 through week 18, Christian Watson ranked as wide receiver 10 overall and had a 23% target share. That's um, it's quite substantial. If you can do that over the course of an eight-game sample size, I don't see reason that he can't do that over the course of a 17-game sample size. Now, granted, he does not have Aaron Rodgers thrown to him anymore, and you know, kind of deep passes were what allowed Christian Watson to obtain those really high numbers, but I do still think that 
there is a genuinely high ceiling with Christian Watson because of what he showed us over the second half of last season. Now, also, to kind of round out this Packers receiving core, they drafted Jaden Reed out of Michigan State in the 2023 NFL Draft. Reed is a very difficult to evaluate prospect, in my opinion, because the quarterback play at Michigan State had just been subpar each of the last few seasons. I really think that this offense is going to kind of utilize Jaden Reed as a slot role and use Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson on the outside. But like I said earlier, with the 21% target share from Alan Lazard up for grabs, if you just sprinkle a little bit to Watson, Dobbs, and Reed, there's definitely a pathway for these guys to be successful if Jordan Love is, in fact, good at playing quarterback in the NFL. So the bottom line for the Packers receiving court is that it's still a little bit of a mystery, but if Christian Watson can return to his late season 2022 form, he definitely has the ceiling to finish as a top 10 wide receiver. Because of the risk associated with him, because he is kind of targeted with the most risky type of targets being deep passes, being you know not with a super high target share, uh, I do think there's a lot of risk associated with Christian Watson. So I do have him as my wide receiver 29. But again, I do think he has a genuine top 10 wide receiver ceiling. Romeo Dobbs and Jaden Reed are great late round dart throws, in my opinion. I think you can trot them out in best ball, redraft, dynasty. Like I just think they're great guys to just sprinkle in at the end of the draft. And if one of these guys happens to get all of Alan Lazard's target share, you've got a productive player for this season, and they're still very young. I think they make for very intriguing targets in dynasty leagues for that reason. So... For my overall rankings, Watson is my wide receiver 29. Romeo Dobbs and Jaden Reed are my wide receivers 73 and 74. All right, that does it for the wide receiver room. So let's go ahead and talk tight ends. Now, the tight end position is one that Green Bay has not really utilized in any of the last few seasons. Um, Robert Tunyon had a really successful 2020, but injuries and just inconsistent usage have not allowed him to hit that same ceiling in each of the last two seasons. Robert Tunyon last season finished his tight end 20 overall and tight end 24 in fantasy points per game. He only had two weekly top 10 finishes on the season. Now, Green Bay, let Robert Tunyon walk. He's no longer a Green Bay Packer. Luke Musgrave was drafted to be the starting tight end for the Green Bay Packers in the draft this season. Was he one of the like top-tier tight end prospects, in my opinion? No. But he's walking into a top-tier situation where he's not really competing with a whole lot of guys for snaps at this tight end position. And this is an offense that probably can throw the ball around a little bit, and they're going to have a lot of targets up for grabs with Alan Lazard leaving. So I think that this is a pretty solid situation for Musgrave to be in. I definitely think he can outpace what Robert Tunyon did last season, and I really think that there's a lot of upside there with Luke Musgrave. So the bottom line for tight end position for Green Bay is that I see Luke Musgrave as a late-round dart throw in best ball leagues and a rosterable player in Dynasty. However, if you are in a regular 10-12 to 12 team PPR league with you know standard rosters, I think he's going to be available on the waiver wire. And so I'm okay taking a wait-and-see approach with him in standard you know, redraft leagues, but I definitely think that in Dynasty and best ball, he's definitely worth a late-round dart throw. Like, you know, he's a young guy who's got a lot of potential, and he's stepping into a full-time role this season. So I definitely do think he is worth drafting in deeper leagues like that, but in redraft, I'm fine to let him sit on the waiver wire and just wait and see what happens. I think there's other guys that have better situations and more upside. All right, that does it for 2023 Green Bay Packers team preview. We are now done with, let me do the quick math here, 19 teams. We only have, no, I'm sorry, 20 teams. We only have, no, I did the math wrong again. 21 teams. We only have 11 teams left. So um, if you are watching on YouTube, and you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. It really does help me out a lot. You'll be notified when new episodes drop. If you're listening to the podcast on audio form, please rate and review. Again, really helps me out a lot. Really do appreciate it. If you heard me talk about best ball and you want to give it a shot, use my promo code mconley 88 on underdog to get your first deposit match. And if you want to see my full ranks and draft guide for the entire NFL, head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Mike's Money Picks. All right, that does it for the Green Bay Packers. Next up, we are going to be finishing up the NFC North with the Chicago Bears. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Hopefully I was able to give you guys some information that will help you win your dynasty redraft or best ball leagues. Hopefully I gave you guys some information that helps you know when and where to draft these Green Bay Packers players. Thank you guys for sticking around this long and I will see you next time.